Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. In this video I want to talk to you about processing and working with unstructured data in Snowflake and how easy that can be. To do that I'm going to use my Everest guide that I use in my Master in Snowflake program to help talk you through the various stages of working with unstructured data. Now in April 2022 Snowflake announced that unstructured data was now generally available within Snowflake with processing on Snowpark in public preview. And since then, it's been adopted by customers across a range of industries for a variety of use cases. And those use cases include storing and securing call center recordings, for example, for sentiment analysis, securely sharing PDF documents across Snowflake's data marketplace, and storing medical images and extracting data from them, as well as many other use cases. Now for customers who want a single centralized repository to store and manage multiple types of data, then not only can they store and govern unstructured data in Snowflake, they can also process that data externally with external functions and tables or natively within Snowpark itself. So what is Snowpark? Well, Snowpark is Snowflake's new developer framework and it natively supports Scala, Java and Python, which is currently in preview. So firstly, let's talk about getting data into Snowflake, specifically unstructured data. Now within the storage layer within Snowflake, before you can get data into Snowflake, you need to stage the data on its way in. Now, there's two different types of stage primarily within Snowflake. One is a internal stage, and the other being an external stage. Now internal stages, they store files internally within Snowflake and you can see here there's three types of internal stages available to you. I'm not going to get into that there but I will put a pop-out banner above the video now so you can look at a previous video where I walk you through those different types of stages. The other option is you can create an external stage which allows you to place your files in an external location and this could be on Amazon S3, Google Cloud Storage or Microsoft Azure Blob and the external stage effectively acts as a pointer and contains the location and credential information if required to access your files within the external cloud storage location. So let's just talk through those two different scenarios now. So if you've got your files, your unstructured data, let's say within Amazon S3, you will then need to create a external stage in Snowflake, which acts as that pointer to the files before you can copy them into the target table within Snowflake. If you've downloaded some unstructured data, PDF files, for example, and you've got those locally on your machine, you can use Snow SQL, which is Snowflake's command line tool to copy that data into Snowflake itself for, via the internal stage into the target table within Snowflake. Now one of the main pain points in managing large repositories of unstructured data is the ability to access metadata easily on those numerous files as well as retrieve some metadata attributes such as the date last modified, the file size and the file patterns. Now there's a concept in Snowflake called directory tables. They're built in tables within Snowflake and they provide an up-to-date tabular file catalog for both external and internal stages. The purpose of directory tables is that it makes it easy to search for and query files using SQL. This means you can use SQL to search through your directory tables to pinpoint those unstructured files that you need to load and work with. Now let's assume you've got unstructured data arriving frequently into your Amazon S3 bucket. You may want to automatically refresh your directory table whenever the file is added into the bucket. Now that can be accomplished by using event notifications within S3. So when a new file is added to the bucket, S3 sends a notification to Snowflake and then you can use a stream to refresh the directory table. Now we won't set up notifications in S3. Again, I've got a previous video that shows you how to do that and combine the various AWS components together so you can then trigger various activities when a file arrives in S3. Again, I'll put the link in the pop-up banner above the video now. 
So we've covered how to store unstructured data and get it into Snowflake, as well as how you access metadata about those unstructured files. Now we look at how Snowflake offers access to the unstructured data through various types of URLs. The first is a scoped URL, and that's generated in Snowflake by using the function called build scoped file URL. I'll put a link uh, below in the video description so you can check that out if you're interested. But that basically generates temporary access to a staged file without granting privilege to the stage itself. The URL expires when that persisted query result ends or when the result cache expires, which is currently set at 24 hours. A file URL is a permanent URL effectively that identifies the database, schema, stage, and file path to a set of files, as opposed to the previous scoped URL where all the information is encrypted. So a roller has sufficient privileges on the stage can access the files and it doesn't contain any authentication token that needs to be done when connecting through the REST API. And finally, you've got a pre-signed URL that's used to download or access files via a web browser, for example, without necessarily authenticating into Snowflake or passing an authorization token. So these URLs are ideal for business intelligence applications or reporting tools that need to display the unstructured file contents. Pre-signed URLs are open, but they're temporary. The expiration time for the access token is configurable when generating the URL itself. And to do that in Snowflake, there is a function called get presigned URL, which generates that URL for you. So we've talked about how to get your unstructured data into Snowflake so you can then work with it. And then we've talked about how you can allow access to it via URLs. But what if you wanna extract and generate insights from that data, such as sentiment analysis, for example, or you could extract text from documents, process emails and extract attachments from them. And to do this, you could use user-defined functions and embed those within Snowflake and leverage the Snowpark libraries to do that. So imagine a healthcare provider has doctor notes stored in a PDF or image format, and they need to extract fields from those files into structured tables. Now within Snowflake, the healthcare provider can create a Java function to extract data from PDFs or image files that can actually then be called and leveraged within SQL queries or pipelines for continuous processing using Snowflake. And if we look at the diagram here, that's what it could actually look like. Here we can see we're using the internal stage, so Snowflake's own managed storage area. We're looking at our built-in directory table to retrieve metadata on those files which are arriving. We've got a stream and a task working together in conjunction. And if you want to know more about streams and tasks, again, I've got a previous video that talks through how you use those in tandem. It can work and process data to store that's stored in another table within Snowflake before then calling out to an external function, which can add additional attributes and do additional processing outside of Snowflake and return the result sets back. And then finally, we can call our Java UDF as well to do our processing, which includes extracting data from those PDFs or image files. And finally, once we've done all that, we may well want to share that data on the Snowflake data marketplace and share that data using secure views, for example. And in Snowflake, this is really straightforward to do because you could create a reader account, for example, to allow a third party access to look at the data that you've processed. So you could create a secure view and add that secure view to a share and give your reader account effectively your third party access to view that data using the secure view and generate insights from that. So I hope you found that walkthrough tutorial useful. We've looked at end to end how you can take and process unstructured data, store it in Snowflake and then potentially look to process that using a combination of Java UDS with Snowpark and process unstructured data and then derive insights from that before sharing it back to users externally to your organization in a secure way using Snowflake Data Marketplace. And if you found that useful and you want to get into the next level of detail, then this is part of my new updates I'm preparing with all the new features and functionality that Snowflake's recently released into my Master in Snowflake program where the members can get access to actually how you're able to achieve this and I share all my kind of code patterns with them as well. 
So stay tuned for more details on that coming up now. I also wanted to let you know about our Master and Snowflake program with myself that we run and it's, it's an exclusive signature program to help you master Snowflake and learn how to design, implement and scale solutions in the cloud. And I've designed this program specifically for those people who have either scratched the surface using Snowflake or who are stuck working with legacy on-premise technologies and haven't been invested in by their companies and have fallen behind in their career. And what I've done is packaged up my knowledge and experience of working with Snowflake since 2017 and learning how to package up Snowflake's out-of-the-box capabilities in a way where you can apply them in the real world to address common challenges. So this program isn't about theory. Of course, I need to introduce you to the concepts if you're new to Snowflake, and many of my members are, but it's really about introducing the theory and then in practice how you apply those in the real world. I've been through the pain of understanding what works and what doesn't. Now I've got a formula or a set of recipes, if you like, that show you how to do that. So the Master and Snowflake program includes in-depth, on-demand video course content that I've created they all include practical hands-on demos. I provide access to all the code, templates, and files that I use as part of those demos. So you can download them and use them freely. You may want to use them in your day-to-day -day work. You may want to take them and customize them and use them as a starting point. All members on the program get exclusive access to a members-only group where everybody can help each other out and share their knowledge and best practice and get expert advice. Finally, I also carry out a group 60 minute coaching call with all the members, totally optional, where you can ask me anything about Snowflake, data analytics, data strategy, data architecture, you name it, um, interview advice, and I can help you and give my um, input and help and support and guidance around that. Finally, you'll get lifetime access to all future updates. Snowflake's changing and evolving. There's new features and releases every week, and you'll continue to benefit from those updates as well. At a high level, there's 10 modules. This is what we cover, everything ranging from the Snowflake architecture to getting data into Snowflake. And then once you've got data, how do you effectively use it, secure it, share it, and work with it to ensure that you get the maximum value from your Snowflake implementation? If you're interested, I've included the application link in the video description below. If this sounds like the thing that you're looking for and you want to supercharge your career, and if you're ready to take the ultimate step, I'd really encourage you to fill out the application form below.